Oh, what? What's going on, Game Weepers? How are we all? Timestamps Eggs is back, and I have a very special video for you today because I'm going to be revealing the 20 best champions of the upcoming patch 11.8. And let me just say that there are some very, very interesting picks in here because of the changes the 200 years of experience balance team have in store. So if you want an idea, guys, on who to play for the rest of the current patch so you can then hit the ground running on that particular champion in a week's time, do not go anywhere. Now, if you watched our 11.8 changes video yesterday, I want you to tell me in the comments which champion you think is going to be the most broken in just over a week's time. And while you're doing that, make sure to head on over to the Game Weep website for elite learning resources. We've got guides, courses, analyses, daily uploads from Eggs himself. We have it all, guys. So check it out. Links, as always, in the description and comment section. All right, let's get into it, guys. And starting off the countdown is a champion getting buffed in 11.8. And this is the first time this season LeBlanc has featured in this series. And the buff is big. An extra 10 damage in your Q at all ranks and another 20 when the mark detonates. So no matter what combo you are using, you are going to be dealing more damage. And what's funny is that if anything didn't need changing, it was your damage on LB because you have plenty of it. So now it will be even easier to solo kill your lane opponent and snowball, and this also helps with last hitting, you know farming cannons with your Q for example. The best LeBlancs in the world without this buff still win over 50% of their games, so who knows what this will rise to next patch. Now another win rate that will be improving, maybe not as much as LB's, but still, 11-8 Cho'Gath is looking feastier, because one major item you can buy to completely nullify Aurelia, Trendomir, Vayne, Jinx is getting buffed, and this is frozen hard of course. So it's now giving you 80 armor, so 10 more, so it's not groundbreaking of course, but the gaff was so strong anyway, and with the Titan Titanic Hydra nerf, harder matchups like Urgot and Aurelia will be easier to deal with in the laning phase. Now, I'm not sure if any of you have played against Cho in recent times, but it's not only hard to kill him, but actually hard to not lose after level 6, especially if he builds a Bramble Vest and gets an early Barmy Cinder. So Cho'Gath even better next patch, guys. Now, ahead of Cho'Gath, we have a champion that powerful that even with an incoming nerf, she is still going to be super strong, and this is Annie. So your W's mana cost is higher, but as I said in yesterday's video, you will have your Lost Chapter or Ludens Tempest by the time you really feel this, so no worries here. And guess what? One mythic item you can buy is getting buffed. And this is Hextech Rocket Belt. And this actually used to be the best option for Annie before Rido nerfed it. And the magic penetration it's now going to give is huge. For a champion like Annie with high base damages and AP ratios, magic pen can work wonders. Now you are losing 100 health, so you're more killable, but offensively you are way more of a threat. So you kill them before they kill you. So Rocket Belt Tibbers is actually back. Now speaking of offense guys, coming in at number 17 on the countdown is probably the most feared champion on the rift. And next patch, Darius will not only be dominant in the top lane because of the power of the Stride Breaker and Steric Gauge combo, but also playable in the jungle. Yes, jungle, Darius, you heard me correctly. And what Ryder doing, guys, is increasing your passive damage to monsters to 300%. This means you can go from red, raptors, walls, blue, and gromp at the same time and get to scuttle crab before it spawns, and your ganks are actually pretty potent. Now, you will have to watch out in the early game because your cooldowns are long, but if you just ward your second buff and get to level 3 and 4 free of charge, you are good to go. And Darius means I want you telling me what you think of this too. Are you guys actually going to play him in the jungle, or just stick to the top lane. Now just like jungle Darius guys, we have another champion getting buffed in the jungle and her clear speed is now one of the fastest in the entire game and this is what is really defining the jungle meta at the moment. So for 11-8 Morgana, you are going to pop off. Your tormented soil is dealing an extra 50% damage to monsters and with the effect that reduces your W's cooldown when it deals damage to enemies, you can smash through Krugs, Raptors and Wolves as fast as anyone. Your ganks as well are also good because your Q and your 2v2 and skirmishing potential is low-key broken all because you're black shield. Think of how useful this would be for a high damage dealer like Yasuo or Yone or Fizz, no one could stop them and it counters so much of the CC that's in the game. So get ready guys to see a lot more of Morg jungle in 11.8. Now I can't stop with the updated junglers guys and up next we have an AD assassin who will be picked way more as a jungler rather than a mid laner and this is Zed and the buff is massive so your passive bonus damage can be procced multiple times on targets that are not enemy champions, so minions or monsters and this damage cap is higher in the early game when it procs on dragons, rift held and barons and these changes guys fix the problem with jungle Zed. Farming camps in the early game. So you can do a similar clear to the new Darius where you go red, raptors, walls, blue and gromp at the same time and you're all set. Now as for mid lane Zed, well you're still going to be strong just because lethality is so good and well I hate to say it, the Seeker's Arm Guard nerf. But one of your big counters, Vladimir, is getting buffed so a few more games will be harder to win. Overall though, awesome patch for Zed. Now we're going back to the top lane for this next champion guys and like Cho'Gath, this bit of beef is going to be performing better because of the Frozen Heart buff and this is Nasus. You know the mana so you can spam your Q, the extra armor and the attack speed slow the stacks with your wither, like you are one of the biggest cucks to popular bruisers like Jax, Fiora, Trendabit, and there's a reason Susan has boasted one of the highest win rates across the board this season. He's busted, and will be just as busted next patch. Now this next champion, guys, has been broken for multiple patches now, just like Nasus, and this is Diana. And she is one of the five champions getting buffed in terms of jungling, but these changes, guys, are actually really good for mid-Diana, which is where she can 1v9 the easiest. So your passive damage is doubled against monsters, and your passive attack speed is higher earlier on. And this 
this is what's important to focus on. The extra attack speed is great for your early trading, and this means more conquest stacks and more damage, of course. You also might want to entertain the idea of building the new rocket belt as your mythic instead of night harvester for the magic pen, so you can shred your opponents even more. So 11-8 Diana guy is still right up there with the best of them. Now another mage I just mentioned him who will be right up there with the best of them is Vladimir, and the Crimson Reaper has been on so many of our worst champions videos because of the Grievous Winds buff and just the fact that other mages are far better. Well, not this time because Vlad's Q cooldown is decreasing at later ranks, and this will be on a four second cooldown at level nine. And that, guys, is without any ability haste. So whether you're trading in lane or you need an extra Q to kill someone at the end of your all in, very useful indeed. And as I just mentioned with Diana, the rocket belt change with the magic pen makes you even deadlier. So your poke, your fighting, your one shot potential is even higher. By far the best patch in ages for you bloodsuckers. Now we've talked about Darius, guys, and other popular top laners like Fiora, Jarek, you can throw in Wukong and Camille as well, but aren't you guys sick and tired of playing against them? Well, one champion you can pick to dumpster every fighter in the game is Quinn. We all know that ranged champions, guys, are the kryptonite of the top lane because of their unlimited harass, but Quinn is just built different because she has a point and click peel in her vault that negates any real counter player fighter or bruiser may have. Now, the butter frozen heart does mean you might have to be a little more careful against Cho'Gath and Nasus, but this is so rare that it's nothing to worry about, so 11-8 Quinn guys will still be flying high. Now we're into the top 10, and if you're enjoying this series and the continued timestamps on these types of videos, make sure to let the crew and I know by smashing that like button. And yeah, number 10 and I countdown guys is the champion who has been ubiquitous this season. Well, apart from maybe in the bot lane, but if you want a hard carry for mid, top, jungle, Nocturne is the premier champion to do so, and you wouldn't think Nocturne would be one of the best abusers of the Shrine Breaker mythic, but he is. It gives you so much stickiness and fighting stats that you can still one-shot enemy squishies and battle it out in the top lane against tankier opposition. You can also take Dustblade if you want a bit more damage output, especially from the mid lane, so the lane and build diversity is a real advantage, and it's why Nock is back on the countdown. Now, ahead of Nocturne, guys, we have another AD champion you can 1v9 with in the mid lane, and this is Talon, who has been one of the best solo queue champions since Riot buffed your rake in the preseason and in this season's 11-4 patch, and nothing will change in 11-8. And just listen to this cheeky stat. In Master and above, Talon currently boasts a 55% win rate. So if you can master the combos and learn the matchups, you have a good a chance as any champion to solo carry games. With Lethality in a strong spot and Mages and AD carries not having much defense to prevent you from unleashing the armor pen, you can Prowler's Claw your way through teams. So 11-8 Talon, very scary. Now this next champion is another mid laner who used to be one of the most broken picks when the new shop dropped, and Echo is back to being broken because of the Rocket Belt change. The extra damage, guys, gives you a bigger mythic power spike and can help accelerate how fed you get in the game, so you can hit your subsequent spike sooner and take over. Now Echo honestly is one of the most underrated champions on the Rift at the moment. After all the nerfs to Lich Bane and Zonyas and Ravenous Hunter, he hasn't been seen nearly as much, but he is still holding on to a lot of that previous damage and hits even more next patch. Now coming in at number 7, we have another AD Assassin God who would have thought, but this one's a jungler. So if you want a nuke your way to wins in 11-8 guys, the Unseen Threat is indeed one of the deadliest. So Kha'Zix, next patch guy, is one of the best still. You may not have the clear of a Morgana, sounds weird saying that now, or a Hecarim, or a Nidalee, or a Graze, but you do have the most damage. Now you might say, but there's a nerf to the cooldown boost, but this is the biggest troll nerf of all time. Like 50 extra gold means nothing, and they shouldn't have even listed it to be honest. So does play Kha'Zix still very OP. Now perhaps the most OP Rocket Belt abuser in the game guys, this champion isn't talked about that much as being the best, but the stats don't lie. Fiddlesticks has had one of the top 5 win rates for the last few patches, and with the Rocket Belt magic pen buff, your post level 6 is as scary as anything. You also have a great full clear so you can get to level 6 quickly, just make sure to ping your ultimate's cooldown before your team has run it down. Now I know 5 champions who will be stronger than Fiddle next patch guys, and as we get into the 11-8 top 5, if you want to perfect, if you want to master any of the champions we've been through, there's one destination, GameWeb.com. From a coach who has helped countless students climb to division and tier climbs, I am uploading a video every single day for our subs, and you can throw in the rest of our challenger tier content freshly made so you can smash it in season 11. There's no way you don't improve with our help, so get signed up, links down below. Alright, so let's say you're sick of playing against AD bruisers and fighters and want to make them complain on Reddit. Well, here's your answer. Malphite. Build a Bramble Vest right off the bat and no one can touch you. Well, it's not that simple, of course. You know, you have to manage your mana in the early game and trade carefully with champions like Darius, but after that, you are literally an unstoppable force. Whether you choose Frostfire Gauntlet or the 11-6 buff Sunfire Rages, you are always going to positively impact a game. The Titanic Hydra nerf makes you even more of a cuck to such champions, and the Frozen Heart buff makes it more purchasable against the right team comp, so another insane patch to play Malph. Now, if you're a player who likes high skill cap champions and you've got some quick fingers, then you have got to start playing Kiana. 
Kiana. It's that simple, guys. In Korea, for instance, the best Kianas have over a 55% win rate, and this isn't just a one-off, by the way. This has been the case since 11.5, when Riot buffed your W to Oblivion and your ultimate, and in the same patch, Serpent's Fang also got buffed, and last patch, Cyrilda's Grudge got buffed, so the last month or so has been a real purple patch for Kiana, so jump on board before it's too late. Now, the top three champions, guys, for the second patch in a row are the same three powerhouses I hate to be boring, but it's just true. And for this first one, a lot is actually happening this patch. So coming in at number three on the countdown, guys, is the highest win rate champion in the game at the moment, and that is Yorick, who got buffed beyond belief last patch and is unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, getting nerfed. But the thing is, guys, Yorick is also getting some quality of life changes, and these are straight up buffs. So you're losing damage in your E, which won't be close to what it was right now, but rather fixing the tower targeting issue where the enemy turrets hit Yorick instead of his Mistwalkers and Maiden. So now turret diving and split pushing have become even more legit, and with Trinity Force, I don't know if there is a champion in the game who can deal with your late game side lane power. Now the runner up to the best 11-8 champion guys might not have the late game Yorick has, but Wukong has the strongest laning phase out of any top laner and is a great counter to his fellow bruisers. Your tanky passive and slipperiness make it hard to kill you and trade with, and because you can choose between a few mythics, you can be effective against any type of champion. You've got Divine Sundra, Gore Drinker, and a buff TF, so good. He has one of the highest win rates in the entire game right now, and with the new Trinity Force has stayed at the top and will stay there next patch. Now the number one champion of 11-8 guys, and I know some of you are going to be fuming because we've seen so much of this champion this season, will get ready to see more of her. The only reason, but it's the biggest reason of all, that this champion is at the top of the pile is because Camille will still benefit the most from the Trinity Force buffs. Giving up attack speed for more damage and more rounded stats is crazy good, and your split pushing is still going to be off chops with the threefold strike passive, now triggering on towers. Like, I don't think there is going to be a bigger mythic power spike in the game, and as we all know, these items determine for the most part whether a champion is good or not, so 11-8's number one is Camille. Now, as always, guys, I want to hear your thoughts on our list, and before leaving, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss tomorrow's upload, and until then, this has been Koji's Peace.